to further validate um, our offerings here at Room Business School. Thank you very much. Uh, in case you're just joining us, uh, we had taken a welcome speech from the founding president and dean of Rome Business School, Professor Antonio Ragusa. Uh, we had also had a bit of uh, knowledge sharing on the Roman culture from my colleague Betty Adelego. And you just heard from Dr. Humphrey Akanazu, the country director of Rome Business School, Nigeria. Welcome once again, our dear executive students. And uh, today is the orientation program for the April 2022 dear executive students here at Rome Business School, Nigeria. Of course, uh, before we move to our keynote speaker of today, uh, Mr. Emeka Okwara, if you're just joining us, I uh, would like you to also, you know, drop your LinkedIn profile. Let's have an avenue to network with each other and, you know, meet each other. Of course, is a path towards career advancement here at Rome Business School. So I would like you to, in the comment section, drop your LinkedIn profile and let's connect with one another. Just drop your LinkedIn profile or just share your profile with us, what you do, and let's see how we can network with one another. Okay, with, without much ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll be moving to the next agenda of today. Someone asked about the agenda earlier. I just briefed us on what we have heard. We have so much more. Uh, next on the agenda is the keynote address from Mr. Mika Okpara. I'll be most delighted to introduce him uh, as I read his profile. Uh, for those of you that do not know Mr. Emeka Okwara, of course, if you are in the media communication space, he's a very, very popular person. Uh, but for those of you that do not know him, Mr. Emeka Okwara is currently the Vice President, Corporate Communications and Corporate Social Responsibility at um, Etel. He leads the team that develops the strategies and executes various activities in the management of media relations, social media communications, consumer affairs, internal communications, government relations, and social investment. He has deep, high-level knowledge of the workings of local and international media, government and regulatory agencies, and maintains a wide network of contacts and friends in the media, social media, and various state and federal governments. Mr. Emeka Okwara is a multiple award-winning crisis management expert, uh, leadership change strategist and rebranding veteran. Emeka Okwara has over 25 years of consistent communication practice spanning journalism, advertising, public relations, events, sponsorships and corporate social responsibilities. He is one of Africa's leading experts in crisis communication, leadership transition and rebranding. He is reputed for managing the ownership and management crisis seven leadership changes and six brand name changes in one of the leading telecommunications company in Nigeria. Of course, none other than Airtel Nigeria. The company which began as Econet Wireless, for those of you that know, changed to Vodacom Nigeria, then to V-Mobile Nigeria, then to Celtel Nigeria, and later to Zane, and has seven CEOs, and four board chairmen in sometimes seamless transition professionally and strategically managed by none other than Mr. Emeka Okwara. Yes, uh, he's also a member of the International Public Relations Association, a member of the International Association of Business Communications, a member of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations and the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria, APCON. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome and to deliver a keynote speech on professional agility from Mr. Emeka Okwara, the communications guru in Rome Business School. He's also one of the advisory board of Rome Business School Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Emeka Okwara. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, um, MC, for that uh, very flattering uh, introduction. Uh, um, I almost did it. I almost didn't recognize myself, but um, yes, it's it's me. Um, let me begin by thanking um, Professor Ragusa. Um, um, I remember some years ago, we traveled together to Abiyokuta to see President Obasanjo. And um, a day after, Obasanjo called me to say, that man is a very intelligent man. So I said to him, he couldn't have been a founder of a school, a own business school, 
without being an intelligent man, you know. So, so Prof, I want to I want to commend you for the great work you've done. Uh, I mean, founding this school and maintaining it up till now, and for bringing it to Nigeria. More importantly, I mean, we are Thank we you love so education. Thank we you. are passionate. So we key into your passion for education. I also want to thank my brother and friend, uh, Humphrey. Humphrey actually is my teacher, even though he doesn't know. Um, he's always calling me to, to tell him something. He doesn't know that every time he calls me, I learn something from him. So Humphrey, thank you very much for the great work you and your dream team are doing in the uh, room business school. I've been there sometimes to even take some classes and I see the amount of the quality of work you guys are doing. I'm extremely impressed. Congratulations. And then thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge and experience. Uh, very often when I'm asked to come to speak, I always plead that I cannot, I don't write, like writing speeches. I'll probably just come and share my personal experience because that's really what this is all about. The business school is a place where uh, students come to learn from the experience of people who've done it before. It's, not, it's no more classroom work that we did in the university where the prof never worked in Airtel, but he's teaching you telecoms. So I'm going to tell you what I have been through, what I have seen. Um, to the new students today who are beginning a new journey in their personal and professional development, I congratulate you. And... Um, um, the, 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 the Rome Business School says the idea is to train today's managers for tomorrow. And it's easy for you to, to deduce that most of the people in that class, most of the people coming in this session are young people. They are professionals who are looking to, who are aspiring to take their careers to a new level, who are trying to rise in the professional life. But I, I do tell you that um, at the end of the day, it is not just professional, it's also about your personal life because one of, none of them can go without the other. Um, so I have seven things to share with you uh, in the next 15 minutes. And I just wish you just um, be patient as I struggle through it. I didn't write it. Um, professional agility, a tool for business and career growth. Um, again, Humphrey sent me to school with this topic. I called him and said, Prof, what does this mean now? I don't know. He said, no, if I tell you what to say, that means I've said it, so you better go and read. So, <laughs> so I, went to, I went to study the meaning of agility. I never knew what it meant, trust me. But, but, but just, just, just to create a context, agility is the ability to move quickly and easily the ability to move quickly and easily is also the ability to think and understand quickly. Um, I think that's, that's why we go to school really, um, especially when we go to business school, we, we take our game to, the, to a new level. Um, we, are no longer, we are no longer playing at the junior league, we are not playing at the, at the premiership, where we understand the game already, but we need to improve our game. So one of my best, best quotations around agility is won by Bill Gates. I'm sure you all know Bill Gates. So Bill Gates says success today requires the agility and the drive to constantly rethink, reinvigorate, react, and reinvent. Constantly rethink, reinvigorate, react and reinvent. Now, these words stuck out for me, and that's where I'm going to tell you my first story. So in 2019, after my, after my boss gave me my appraisal, my performance report, which included my bonus, my promotion, and everything, and we had a conversation. He asked me, and I asked him, why have you not fired me yet? And he looked at me and said, how do you mean? I said, when you joined this company eight years back, there were 14 of us in the ESCO. And I'm the only one still in ESCO. And the rest are gone. Um, what have I done? So he looked at me and said, Emeka, the trick is this. So long as you continue to reinvent yourself, 
the day I start telling you what to do in corporate communications, you will have to leave the company. The day I start telling you something about what you need to do about corporate comms and CSR, you will have to leave the company because I'm now, I'm now teaching you. You're supposed to be the master. So the first thing I must tell you, my dear friends today, is you have to be the master of your own act. You have to be the master of your own act. Be it supply chain, be it marketing, be it public relations. Make sure that in every organization or in your association, you are the go-to person. And I can tell you today in Airtel, if there is, I, 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 I mean, I'd be damned if anybody could go outside of the zone to ask any questions regarding PR, corporate comms, events, sponsorship, and CSR. It has to be me to make it possible for you to be the go-to person. You're the master. Anybody wants to know something about, about supply chain, anything about marketing comes to you. If anybody wants to write a speech and there's something to do with marketing, they will come to you then you have become the master. And you cannot become the master by mere wishing it. You need to study hard for it. Coming to your own business school is one such step you've now very wisely taken. So you need to study, you need to read, you have to attend courses, you have to spend your money to continue to improve yourself, to become a master of your own art. The second point is about reinventing yourself. You just will have to reinvent yourself. If you stay the same every time, if you use the same words every time, if your slides read the same every time you make a presentation, then you are still the same person. If you're still doing the same job every time, I'm not suggesting that you should move around, keep changing jobs. I want to suggest that you make deliberate efforts to make yourself new, to refresh yourself. To be, to be, okay, so Prof used a word, glocal. Being glocal means you think globally, but you act locally. So you have to have the mindset of an international person. So if you meet a colleague or if you meet somebody who is doing marketing, who is German or he's from Singapore, you can comfortably stand up to the person in any, in any conversation. You can engage that person in any conversation. You can actually do exactly or even better than the person can do. But the local part of it is you are doing it locally in Nigeria. You have to be local in your orientation. You think global, you act local. You have to reinvent yourself, continue to reinvent yourself, continue to be new, continue to be fresh. And the way to do this is for you to know what's up. As I say, my cousins will say, you don't know what's up. You need to know what's up. There are new things every day in every profession. There are new, there are new theories. There are new ideas. There are new, way, there are new ways of working. You need, to, you need to know what they are. You need to know how to use those new tools as well to deliver your job. If you're not new, if somebody within the organization now is the one telling you, have you, have you, have you heard about this? Then that means you're not, you're not there. You need to be fresh all the time. It doesn't matter how long ago you graduated. I left university in, in 1990. If you check it out, it's about it's over 30 years. But um, if you come out of school this year and come for uh, a practical, a practical experiential uh, exam with me, I promise you in my own area, I'll beat your hands up. I won't let you beat me because I know what's up. You need to know what's up. You have to be fresh all the time. The third point I must make to you, for you to remain agile, to be agile, is you have to be adaptive. Now, anybody who doesn't understand the meaning of being adaptive, that means you didn't live through the pandemic. The pandemic taught everybody a very big lesson, a very big lesson. Let me tell you a story. My kids are seven. At the time, they're going to be seven in April. At the time the pandemic started, they are just a little over four. So they have to study from home. Four year old kids, I bought them laptops. I set up Zoom for them. You can't believe it. My wife struggles to share her screen. My children share their screen with their blabbering. They don't even think about it. They share their screen. And their mom will come and say, hey, hey, hey. And if you say, no mom, we're sharing our screen already. 
four-year-old kids, they share their screen, they make presentations on Zoom, they put on their laptop, they log on, they have the password, they know. In fact, they memorize the password. My children memorize my mobile phone number at the age of two. I, I wrote it down for them, made them to do it. They read it four times and they could give my number anytime. You have to be adaptive. The, the, the pandemic taught all of us a new lesson. Without work from home, everything is online. Interacting with our people, interacting with our teams, interacting with our bosses, making presentations, attending workshops, attending trainings, making purchases, et cetera, et cetera. Life change. Anybody who couldn't adapt, many, many, adapt, many people, I can tell you, are still struggling. I know, I know colleagues who can't even stay on a Zoom call very well. They don't know how to mute their microphone. They come, they don't know how to put on their video. It's that bad. And these are graduates. So you have to become adaptive. And I'm using, I'm using the pandemic and online activity as an example. Situations are changing every day. We're living in a dynamic world. So if you live in a dynamic environment, like we find ourselves, suddenly there is no fuel. You don't have fuel to fuel your car. You have to work from home. You need to set up meetings. You need to set up, you need to approve. You know, some people cannot sign off documents on PDF. They don't have to do PDF, online e-signatures. Those are basic things that you must, you must adapt. You have, you have to be sharp. You're coming out of a business school, you need to know what's happening. You have to adapt to situations as they come. The fourth point I'll make is for you to know your customer. Whatever business you do, and the telecoms company did a fantastic job. MC, please prompt me as my time is going, right? So the telecoms company did a very good job of what we call KYC, know your customer. Dr. Humphrey Akanazo has done a fantastic job of knowing his customers. He knows his students, all the associations he listed today. I've seen him at least four or five times. He invited me interacting with these people. You see him gliding through the crowd, talking to people, moving around, picking up ideas, sharing ideas, bantering with them. You need to know the people you are dealing with. You need to know your customers. If you do any business and you know your customers, then you will know what they want. Knowing them doesn't mean knowing their faces. By registering you in my, on the Ether network, by knowing your house address, by knowing your alternative number, I can, this, I can know what to sell to you. I know your usage pattern. I know when to send you a new offer. I know how to monitor your credit. And by the way, if you commit crime, I can find you wherever you are, and so on and so forth. So you need to know your customer. In any business you do, you must know them because they are the ones that pay your bills. If you don't know them, you can't serve them. If you know them, you can serve them very well and you can give them a good experience because service to your customer is about experience. And when I'm talking about customer, I'm not talking about those of us who also make clothes. I'm talking about those who are managers in the office. There are people you relate with in finance. There are people you relate with in PR who come to you for approval. You're a HR manager. People come to you sometimes with their problems. You are listening to the environment. You need to know who these people are. You need to understand their idiosyncrasies and their and your psychology, so know your customer. It's an important thing for you. It gives you the agility you need to continue to succeed and for you to aim for the top. The one before the last is one that is very important and very dear to me, and that is you must build a network. No man is an island, as they say. First and foremost, coming into this program, starting today, you have 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 or so people in that class. That's a network already. You know, if you finish this program and you don't make friends, you don't make like 10, half of them or 45% of them or more as their friends, as their network, that means you didn't do well. I'm talking about this class alone. But as a life, as a life, um, life advice, advisory, please make it a point of duty to build a network, a network, a network of friends, a network of professional colleagues. I will advise you, try and look for people who are senior, who are older, who are more successful in your area of professional um, operation. Make friends with them. They will teach you more. They will share experience. Now, you will find out that what that guy, what a maker has done in the past 25 years or so, if you stay close to me, 
You can pick it up in six months or less. You don't need to buy all the books in the world. I'll tell you practically how to tackle XYZ problems. That's what you need to get ahead. Those books, and I'm, me and you, we know we buy books every time. Those books, you never get to read beyond one chapter. Sometimes, sometimes we don't read it. We put them in the shelf to show off that we own books, we buy books. When somebody says, uh, you say, oh, I, I have this book. We haven't read it. So look for mentors. Look for mentors. You need mentors. You also will mentor people. So when you get people who are more experienced, more successful, who are older in the profession, they will teach you what they don't teach you at Rome Business School. They will teach you what they don't teach you at Harvard Business School. You'll be shocked what you will learn, you know. I mean, I travel, uh, when I'm home, I travel to Abiyokuta, I go to Basanto. I don't even have anything to do. I just sit around, just sit there. And I see people come and go. And I see how he deals with them. And I leave that place wiser, older, and a better person. Trust me, you will learn from this. The, the final thing I'm going to say is that you have to be social. You have to be social. Um, this is a modern world. There's social media. I've had people say to you, I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not, you are dead. If you're not on the social media, you are dead. You don't need to go there and show off your house or your car or your children. No. There's a mine of information available on social media. You get to know about what's happening very quickly, more quickly through social media. You get to know all kinds of things. It's a place to learn. Forget about the show off. Forget about the activities and all of that. Just get there to, the, to so get into social media. Be on LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, you, you even see vacancy. You see positions. You will meet people of like man, you see people in the same profession with you. I mean, I interface with some of you already on social media, on LinkedIn. Um, um, I follow, I follow Rome Business School. I follow Professor Ragusa on on Facebook. I follow him. I see what he does. I see his movement, and I get to learn so much from the way he thinks, from the way he writes. It's actually a free resource. The social media is a free resource, but more importantly, the social media gives you feedback real-time feedback about your business, sometimes about yourself. You make a post, people will respond to you, and they'll tell you something. Some people don't give a damn. They'll tell you as it is. If I make a post regarding Airtel, people come there immediately and they give it to me about Airtel. So you need feedback more than anything else to succeed in your professional career. So social media will give it to you big time. And social media will give it to you for your business. So be social, be global. So my brothers and my sisters, I, I, I also saw another quote about agility. And it says, agility is ability to adapt and respond to change. I did say something about the pandemic and all of that. Ability is the, agility is the ability to adapt and respond to change. Agile organizations and individuals, they view change as an opportunity and not a threat. So when change hits you, and change will always hit us, you will find out that it is an opportunity. Any company, and I'll tell you another personal story before I sign off. When, we, when I started making clothes for men, by the way, Professor Agusa, your picture, your picture wearing my, my clothes is one of my favorite pictures, which I used to show off. Anyway, <laughs> so... When I started making clothes, I love it. When I started making, <laughs> you know it, right? <laughs> when I started making clothes, I told my tailors that we have customers who are in Australia, who are in Canada, who are in America. I go on Facebook, I post my picture. Those guys reach out and say, How do I get your clothes? And because we make clothes that are made to measure, I said, What do I do about this? And I'm talking about six, seven years ago. So I created a format where we take their measurements online. So I call them on FaceTime, I call them on Facebook video, I call them on WhatsApp video, I call them on Botim, and I say, give your wife or give your brother or give your child a tip. And I take them through. Listen, it takes me five to 10 minutes to take somebody's measurement online. And I'll make clothes and I'll ship it to Canada. Don't pay me. When you put my clothes on, you pay me. What happened? The pandemic came. And people were still buying my clothes. And I was making clothes. I was taking people's measurement online. Other tellers, we are trying to find a way around it. I, was, I, was, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel the pandemic when it came to making clothes. That is what we call 
being able, being agile, being able to adapt, being able to see change as an opportunity and not a threat. So as we used to say in those days in secondary school, so with these few points of mind, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time and for your attention. I don't know whether you have questions. I hope you don't have questions so that I can disappear. Thank you very much.